Is your property really an asset or is it an actual fact, a liability? Many agents will tell you that your property is an asset, but the truth is that for most of you, your property is actually a liability. But what exactly is an asset or liability? To put it simply, an asset puts money in your pocket and a liability takes money out of your pocket. Hi, welcome to Red Dot Homes. Watch this short video to the end and we'll review how you can tell if your property is actually an asset or a liability. More importantly, you will discover how you can maximize your investment returns by identifying an undervalued property with high rental yield. But first, let's address some of the property myths. Myth 1. My home is fully paid in cash, therefore it's an asset. But what about utility bills, maintenance fees, property tax and other miscellaneous costs? How much are those costs per month and how much is that per year? That's the cost of owning a home in Singapore. In other words, your home might be fully paid, but still bleeding your money month after month and year after year. Sounds nothing like an asset and everything like a liability, right? In summary, as long as you are staying in your home and paying for that privilege, your home is a liability. Myth number two. But my home has appreciated in value since I bought it. Now, even if your home's value has increased, as long as you're still staying in it, it is still a liability. Unless you manage to sell your home for a profit, capital appreciation on paper does not justify your home being an asset. Myth 3. HDB is a liability and private property is an asset. This is not true either. An asset or liability has got nothing to do with the type of property. Remember, an asset puts money in your pocket and a liability takes money out of your pocket. For a HDB owner who decides to rent out the property and can generate a positive cash flow, this HDB is an asset. For an owner-occupied private property or an investor who struggles to cover the monthly mortgage repayment with the rental, this property is a liability. Similar to owning a car, for most people it is a liability. But to a car rental company generating positive cash flow month after month, that car is an asset. So here are four categories that a property falls into. And how exactly do you identify an undervalued property? The first way is through absolute price comparison. You'll be shocked how simple this is. Step number one, choose an area of focus. Step number two, study and analyze the past transacted data of all the properties in the area. Step number three, compile all the available properties for sale in the area. And step number four, make price comparisons and identify undervalued properties. With some time and effort, I believe anyone can do it. Now, the second way is using relative price comparison. Now, as property prices do not always move identically across the board, this creates both a widening and narrowing price effect. One segment always tends to become over or undervalued compared to the rest. The idea here then is to swap your property when the price ratio is in your favour. Once you have purchased your undervalued property, the next step is to rent it out. With our Rental Booster formula, we have helped our clients secure 7% and above gross rental yield for their properties. Keen to find out exactly how we can help you secure an undervalued property with high returns? Click the border around this video, fill in your details, and we'll contact you further to share our proven strategies with you. Talk soon.